Okay, so <coughs> we'll go ahead with more screw theory. Okay, so we'll now look at to start with a three freedom serial arm. Okay, and in this uh, you have pointer options, arrow options, visible. So we have a three joint manipulator. So there is a joint here at A, a joint at B, a joint at C and then there is the end effector. Okay. So then if I take this point D on the end effector, so I extend the end effector, we have been doing this for a while and then we take this point D on the link which is instantaneously coincident with the origin and we ask what are the components of the velocity of D on link 3 in x, y and z direction. Okay, so, we ask a simple question. So, the way we do it is <coughs> if the two other axes are locked, right, then the x component of the velocity is y a omega 0 1 and y component is minus x a omega 0 1, very simple. Let us flick back. So, if I lock these two axes, then this is rotating about this joint, then the velocity of a point here will be basically omega cross r, right. So, omega is omega 0 1 times this radius from here to here, cross product of that. So, that is exactly what has been done and similarly, if you lock c and a, that means you allow only the second joint to move. <clears throat> then you get this term and if you lock, so you get y c into omega 2 3 and then x c into omega 2 3. So, to get the composite uh, uh, velocity, so we just add them together. So, if you look at this term, so we had 0 0 1 because the z axis, the rotation axis along the z axis. So, I have 0 0 1 corresponding to that. And then I have y a here, so I have y a here minus x a for the y component and the z velocity component is 0 in this case. Okay, so, I just similarly I put this together and these are all normalized screws because l square plus m square plus n square is equal to 1. So, you took put normalized screws along the respective joint axis, multiply them with and then these are multiplied with omega 0 1, omega 1 2, omega 2 3, the relative angular velocities and you get the screw for the end effector, right. And so, if you take the screw for the end effector, the first three elements will contain the angular velocity of the end effector and the last three elements will contain the velocity of a point on the end effector which is instantaneously at the origin. Okay. And we also know that if you are interested in the velocity of any other point, we can find it quite easily because yeah, by, by multiplying with shifting, we already have the formula for that. So, the next thing is to look at uh, parallel statics. So, you do a very similar thing. You say there are three forces which are acting along the z axis. However, please note, I am not giving you a proof, right. I am giving you an example. I took a planar case and then I asked you what is the velocity. Let us look at this again. So, I said, okay, what is the velocity with this locked? So, we got this term. I said, okay, now if I stack them together and I stack these together and I add them, I get the screw corresponding end effect. I have not given you a proof, nor have I given you a proof that by stacking it like this, I create a screw. I am just pointing out that you get normalized screws and I am saying use it. Okay. This is not a proof. Okay. Why am I not giving you the proof? Too much mathematics. Okay. So, that is why. 
So I'm giving you, I'm being an engineer, I'm giving you usable results without giving you the mathematics of it. Now, <clears throat> we similarly look at this case, we'll appeal to your knowledge of mechanics and then go from that. So we have uh, three forces A, B and C acting of magnitude F, A, F, B and F, C. So what is the net force? You do exactly identical things. You write the screws passing through the point A, point B, point C in the z direction 0, 0, 1 and P, A, Q, A, R, A, P, B, Q, B, R, B, P, C. So this is the line equation multiplied by the intensities and then you get the net wrench acting on the body. Okay. So this is again very similar. So now we try to put it in a slightly formal structure. So, if when we are looking at wrenches, we can simply use a <coughs> excuse me, a single subscript, okay, which is dollar i. So there's a force i, there's a couple i, and then you can also other, otherwise talk about a pitch i, h i. So we can then add any number of wrenches. We can act them vectorially, okay. So in parallel, acting in parallel, they added vectorially, uh, noting that the intensity f i is positive when its sense is the same as the sense of its screw dollar i. So with a screw you associate a direction right and there is a so with that direction you see the intensity is the same is you see it's positive when it's same as the sense of the screw dollar i. So there's a line and there's a screw. So we have to be careful with them and we say the intensity is positive when the line direction and the uh, um, and the intensity direction is the same. So then it is positive and now when you say that the next part is that if you act simultaneously and quote unquote it is called in parallel because that means they are all acting on the same rigid body. Okay. So if on a rigid body you have several forces and moments which are acting. So there are n wrenches about n screws dollar 1 to n and they are in equilibrium then the vector sum of the n wrenches is 0. Okay, so if everything is in equilibrium the vector sum of the n wrenches is 0. So the advantage here or the little difference here is what you did earlier was that you were separately putting the sum of forces equal to 0 and sum of moments equal to 0. Sum of moments about which point? any point in statics right sum of moment equal to 0. So here you just kind of take it out and you basically that any point concept you put it back into the equation of the line. So moment you know the point and you know the direction that becomes the equation of a line. So you are coding it in there and you are not necessarily looking at doing it on or on or selecting a point later. So this can be once you define a coordinate system, you define a line and then the you add vectorially. So you do not select a point later, it is done in a predefined fashion. So it is algorithmically it is a little better. Now <coughs> so if the screws are normalized and the intensity of each wrench is uh, each wrench i is f i then summation f i l i is equal to 0. Okay. So each each of these fi li uh, etc means that means summation fi uh, mi is also equal to 0 summation fi ni is also equal to 0 summation fi pi qi ri everything is 0 each each and every of those terms if they are not normalized then intensity of the range is given by li squared plus mi squared plus ni squared raised to the power of half then summation li is equal to 0 summation ri is is equal to 0 and I am writing star because this could be generalized screws and not necessarily <coughs> lines. Okay.
now you want to combine wrenches. So these are some things which you should already know from mechanics. So if we are talking about a system of n force, force moment combinations acting on a body, on a single rigid body. So if n minus 1 of the applied wrenches are pure couples, then the equilibrating nth wrench can only be a pure couple. This you already knew. Hmm? No net force. So the equilibrating term has to be a pure couple. But if the n minus 1 wrenches are pure forces, then the equilibrating nth wrench in general is neither a pure force nor a pure couple. You need both a force and a couple to balance it out. Um, but if you have n minus 1 general wrenches, then the nth can be a pure force or a pure couple also, if they are general wrenches. So there is no reason. So this is very statement. So it's basically got to do with synthesis. If you're looking to balance it, can you balance it using a pure couple, a pure thing? So that will change how you set up your actuators or how you set up your constraint system, where you put constraints on a system. So was this photograph familiar? No? This is D. Alembert. Have you heard about him? No? Yes? In fluid mechanics. In fluid mechanics, yes. You would have heard about D. Alembert in fluid mechanics. Um, <coughs> So, he was great mathematician and uh, all dynamics that you know today, whether it is Euler-Lagrange or Hamiltonian, it basically comes out of the so-called D'Alembert's principle, okay, this very, very famous equation, though I do not think you would have studied it in this form, okay. So, we will get to that form. <coughs> So, his contribution was that he proved that you can reduce a dynamics problem to a static problem through, through application of this principle. Now, the advantage of reducing a dynamics problem to a static problem is that if you do dynamics, if you remember your um, which book, Shames or uh, which is the other book? Merriam. Which one did you follow? None. Shames or Merriam. So you were told that when you write the, calculate the moment equations, you must do it about either a point on the body which is fixed or about the center of gravity or third point. There is a third one which you rarely use or a point which is accelerating towards the center of gravity. So, there are three cases, right? So, there are these specific points or set of points about which you can write the balance equations. But if it is statics, you can write it about any points. So, that is what his thing is and his basic statement was that the sum of the differences between the forces acting on a system and the time derivative, the moment of the system itself. So, you take the forces and you take mass times acceleration which is the momentum. Now, if you take the component along a motion direction, along a possible, along the possible motion direction, then that dot product has to be equal to 0. Okay. Now, based on this you go, go through and you can derive more dynamics, but this is a fundamental thing which you proved, okay, which is what makes it so interesting. Okay. So, and this essentially couples the wrench system with the screw system, because you get the motion from the screw, this part of it and you get the forces from this part. So, the forces and the moments, they must 
uh, the twists and the wrenches, they must occupy, I mean, they interact with each other and they have uh, kind of complementary spaces through which uh, they can work. And if you go back to the reciprocity condition when we said that a wrench about a particular screw can do no work about when it is twisting about another particular screw if the mutual moment is zero, right? And we said that there's a reciprocity condition that comes out of this kind of a principle. Anyway, <clears throat> now coming back to the serial manipulator again. So we now understand that when we identify various twists acting in series on a body about the screws, each twist is relative between two members or links okay, in a uh, connecting chain. So we write the screw as dollar $ij okay, and for we can use the first subscript denoting reference link, the second the relatively moving link. So these are very loose terms, if, if you take the second or the third link, both are moving around in the air which is the reference which is the relatively moving link is not very clear except that we said that we will march from the base to the top and at the base we have a quote unquote a reference link. So we go through that route. So that tells you what is the uh, or which are the indices to be used. So then we go on through this parallel definition then omega ij is the angular velocity and the term inside bracket Tij is the translating velocity of the link j related to link i. Okay, then for a given coordinate screw coordinate uh, dollar ij, omega ij is equal to minus omega j i, obvious and tau ij is the pitch times the angular velocity, the translation and which is equal to minus of Hij into omega Ji, now pitch of both screws are the same, they have to be the same. It is only the angular velocity which is re reversed and this is equal to minus Tji. Okay. And similarly to the previous case, you say the angular velocity is positive when its sense is same as the sense of its screw dollar, so that is the definition. So then you similarly have now twists acting in series. So if you have n twists which are acting about n screws, now except that now I have a two index system, two sets of indices for each screw. We again say a vector sum of the n twists is zero. So if it is normalized or not normalized, depending on that you have either this term or you have the weighted term coming through on this. So now <clears throat> what we do is we look at a closed loop. Okay. So you start with link 1, 2, 3 and you go around then there is n minus 2, n minus 1. So if there are n, jo if there are n joints and I go marching around that closed loop, Right, then if I go 1, 2, 3, 4 like this, right, so joint 1, joint 2, joint 3, if I come around like this, this will be the joint 10. If I now number the links 1, 2, 3, n minus 2, n minus 1, then this one ends up being the nth one. Okay, so members 0 and n both represent the fixed frame. So we must have omega 0, 1 plus omega 1, 2 plus this thing has to be equal to 0, right? That is because I go around in succession, finally come around. So sum of the net angular velocity must be equal to 0. And then similarly, if n minus 1 of the applied twists are pure translational, then nth twist itself can only be a pure translation. So if everything is translating, then the balancing one has to be pure translation. If they are, these, these are pure rotations, then the last one, can be a general twist and if n minus 1 twists are general and it can be a pure translation velocity or a pure angular velocity, both are, both are possible. So there are no limits to that. 
So now we having done all this, let us now come back to some use of the system. Okay. So we have this manipulator and we are applying a force here. Okay. And we ask force moment combination that is why I put in a dollar whatever you want to apply out here and we ask what is the torque needed at the third joint to hold the linkage stationary. So I have a motor at the third joint so I must make sure that the motor is holding it stationary. Or I might ask this question if I want to apply so much force what is the torque which I must give in that motor. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to simply express this force well I am assuming massless links and that it is static and things like that otherwise I will have to keep on adding terms but essentially it does not matter you could get it down to back to this. So if I have if this is actually accelerating then I will have to add an inertial force here right that you should have done in your mechanisms course. Anyway let us look at this. So we express this uh, wrench in a coordinate system located on the line dollar two three. So I can always do that I know how to transform screws. Do I know how to transform screws? Not yet, not fully right but we know little bit we know how to shift positions we know how to rotate so we will look at that. Now <coughs> if this is the direction of the z axis then I can always rotate the axis using the rotation matrix. So if this is the direction of the z axis then R star will give the required torque it is as simple as that. So you do not have to calculate what happens to intermediate body what happens you know how do, what is the torque here what is the torque here what is the torque here compute step by step go back it is not required. Okay. Straight away you can find out what is the torque required at each joint. So if I know the geometry I can figure out what the torque is at the, at the other end of it. And this is a more complicated problem. Okay, so let us look at this and I will take you through this example slowly. Okay, if you do not understand something stop me and ask. So this is the problem. So I am given this mechanism you can see this is spatial that is why it is in related to robotics and <coughs> I have these so there is a revolute joint here purely revolute joint here and 1, 2, 3 cylindrical joints so that is why it is R C C C linkage. Now I said okay given the angular velocity 0, 1 okay, you find all the angular translation velocities of the links essentially of all the what is the rate at which all the joints will move so and so forth. So this is the geometry so this is about 2 this is 2 feet this is 1 feet and it is said that at this instantaneously this um, dollar uh, 3 0 is equally in inclined to all three coordinate directions. So that is you know that from having solved the inverse kinematics. So I have x axis going like this y axis going like this z axis going to the top quite convenient. So we start this by first writing down the screws okay. Now this is actually quite trivial what is this screw? this is solely along the x axis so it will be 1 0 0 passing through the origin so moment is 0. So p star q star r star are 0. What about this again passing through the origin right along the z axis so 0 0 1 the other things are 0 this is more complicated because 
there is a distance between the origin and this which is of 1 feet okay and this one is equally inclined so you will get this 1 upon root 3 1 upon root 3 1 upon root 3 and then you proceed so so this is in the unnormalized form i put in the screws as this so you can do that by simply observing it or if you are doing numbers if you are working with a package like pro e or solid works and you have the mechanism in some configuration you can easily query the package and you can form these numbers <clears throat> now so here comes the stuff that we were doing now if i take a pair like zero take the twist zero two 0 1 and 1 2 right so there are three i'm taking the three indices and just rotating them i can make three combinations right so dollar 0 2 dollar 0 1 and dollar 1 2 must be linearly dependent okay and similarly dollar 0 2 dollar 2 3 and dollar 3 3 0 okay so we take the first pair you just stack them like this now i do not know what 0 2 is right which will represent the motion of link 2 about the base frame so I just put it here and if i say the rank of this is 2 that means any 3 by 3 determinant which i form using this so i could take this determinant or i could take this determinant or i could take this determinant or I could take this row, uh, sorry, this column, this column, and this column. Any three, three by three, which are formed, must have determinant equal to zero. So you can see a couple of very easy ones, right? That m zero two and p zero two star and q zero two star must be equal to zero. Is that obvious? Okay. Now, <clears throat> if I take this one zero L zero two one one N zero two and one H one two R zero two from this you get R zero two is equal to H one two N zero two. Okay. So you use this relation relationship here. So the same three things are now simplified. I have put in some values which I solved earlier. So from this you get N02 is equal to L02 just from this first three and from this one you get H30 is equal to minus 3 feet per radian. Okay. Clear? take them one by one and then you solve them you can find out all the pitch values so plug everything back you can find the screw 0 2 is this 8 0 2 is this uh, you can find out the line equation similarly you can find 1 2 2 3 all of them just plug back work systematically at it and you get all the values more okay so dollar one two is one 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 minus one three normalize it then to find the three one so you take three one three zero and zero one so you get this nice one and you get this so immediately you get n three one is m three one p three one equal to minus m three one Q31 star is equal to 3M31 and then R31 star is equal to 5M31. Plug it back. You get L31 is equal to 0 and then you get $31 is equal to 
1 upon root 2, 1 upon root 2, so on. So, m 3 1 is common here, so you know that will divide and fall out. And you can get h 3 1 is minus 4 feet per radian and then you can find the line and straight away everything. The only thing we have not done so far is that we have not, we have found out the, the lines and the screws, we still do not know the intensities. That is the magnitudes of twisting about those lines. So, <clears throat> you take any three screws again with, with rooting subscripts i, j, j, k, k, l okay. and then you write equations in this form. Okay. Now, we know that these three are linearly dependent, right? but we write it in this form. So, we know that we cannot solve for all of them, but we can solve for two of them in terms of the third. We already know that from a linear algebra noise. Right? So, that is known. So, that is exactly what happens here. So, once from this set of equations, once you work it, you can easily uh, essentially omega 0 1 plus 1 upon root 2 omega 2 0 is equal to 0. So, omega 1 2 is omega 0 1, omega 0 2 is square root of 2 omega 0 1. And then you have solved for everything. Okay. Similarly, work with the next set dollar zero one, dollar three two, and dollar two zero. Again, rotating subscripts. Write a set, and the only thing you are looking for here is omega one three, that is root three, omega zero one. So everything is solved for. Okay. Okay. So, this is very quick. Okay. Unfortunately, having a PPT does this. Okay. So, I am not writing the equations out on the board. If I, do, if I did it, it would have taken another 10 minutes to solve or maybe 12, 15 minutes to solve the same problem. So, I am going to upload this end of the day today. So, I would request you to kind of go through it and check it out carefully to see that you can actually work it out and whether there are any errors. If they are, please come back to me because I kind of did it sitting in a plane when I was dead tired. So, it is quite possible there might be some errors in it. Now, where is my mouse gone? Okay. <clears throat> So, you now look at screw transformations. That's how do we move it between coordinate frames and we start by first considering pure translation of frames. Okay. So, we just say that the coordinate of O2 in x1, y1, z1 is x12, y12, z12. I am doing this deliberately not writing at x, y, z, I am retaining this index which says 1 to 2, 1 to 2, 1 to 2. Okay, from frame 1 to 2, from the origin of frame 1 to the origin of frame 2, defined in frame 1. So, we know that if you have a point alpha 2, beta 2, gamma 2 and we ask what are its coordinates in frame 1, we know this already that we have this uh, translation matrix. Okay. So, when we consider the twist with twist amplitude L 1 squared M 1 squared plus M 1 square and now we are looking at the same screw described in frame 2 and we are calling it dollar 2. The same screw, same motion that we are talking about, we are calling dollar 1 in frame 1 and then we are calling it dollar 2. Now, velocity of point of the body instantaneously at the origin of frame 1, it will have component p 1 star, q 1 star, r 1 star. And we know that we can get that by using this relationship if it is at p 2 star. Now, if you go, go at it, if you obtain it from dollar 2, then you will get p 2 star, um, you will get L 2 m 2 
L2, M2, N2, right, and P2 star, Q2 star, R2 star. But that will be defined. In that case, the P2 star, Q2 star, and R2 star will be defined as a velocity of point about the origin of frame 2. Now, we know that since that point is located at x12, y12, z12, then by using this determinant, we can obtain it, the velocity of the point which is at the origin of frame 1. Okay. It is a little subtle, go back, work it out. Okay. But you are familiar with this matrix. You are familiar with this operation. Now, all you need to convince yourself that P2 star plus this will give you P1 star. Remember, we have no rotation. We have only translation of the frame. Otherwise, this gets a little bit more complicated. And similarly for this, similarly for this. Now, all we have to do is we will have to take these relationships and stack it in a matrix form. How do we do that? We form this matrix. So, we have the same x12, y12, z12. So, z12 here, so you get it back into this form. Okay. So, and then here you have a set of 3 by 3 matrix which is all zeros and here you have the identity matrix which is 1, 1, 1 and 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, the identity matrix. Into this screw 2 will give you the screw 1. So, this gives you pure transformation, uh, transformation for the translation of a coordinate system and how to move a screw defined in the second frame to the first frame. Okay. You can try it out, you can write the equation of a line, you know where it is, define two frames, verify that this works out. Now, <clears throat> so to under rotation what happens? Essentially the coordinate axis will change, okay. nothing much else happens. Right, so, so you have this matrix, oh, this needs editing, this will be 0, there is a minus sign here, so I will fix it when I upload it. So this matrix will get multiplied by a rotation matrix, right, similarly this will get multiplied by a rotation matrix, this will get multiplied by a rotation matrix. So in the final form, this is identity matrix, so you get R21 multiplying with the identity matrix leaving R21. Similarly, you will have this rotation matrix multiplying the identity matrix, this still stays 0 and this P21 is modified by R21. Okay. And this P21 into R21, you can call this A221 and then you can show that, that the inverse of this transformation is given by taking this matrix and just transposing this and transposing this and transposing this. So, you can move back and forth both ways once you have the definition. So, this gives you a method of writing the screw on any coordinate system that you find convenient and then you can just transform it. So, this method becomes important because what we will finally do is if I want to write the screw about any axis in space, I am using Denovit Hartmut parameters, I know how to do forward kinematics, right. So, I can write, I can find out what is the point on the, on any of the axis, right. On the axis, I have a coordinate system. I already know what is the, a point on that coordinate system. I know that the screw goes along the z axis. So, I can just define the screw as 0, 0, 1 and using the points, I can define the PQR and then I can always transform it into the base coordinate system by using a transformation matrix like this. 
Okay, so that opens up my options in terms of where I can write the screw and what I can do with the screw and all these manipulations. Okay. So, so far what we are saying is that if I know the screw, I can find out the velocity at the origin because that is given by P star, Q star, R star. I can find some other point by using that little determinant alongside it. But this says it does not matter which coordinate frame you write it in, I can transform the screws and redo it for you. Okay. So, in the class on Tuesday, is Tuesday or Tuesday or is it something else? No, Tuesday I think is a Monday. Is it or is it not? I think Tuesday is a Monday. So, maybe on Wednesday, uh, by Wednesday I would request you to please go through the uploaded notes because I am going to use it in a single lecture to uh, derive the Jacobian in closed form of a large six axis manipulator and invert it right and find the singularities okay hopefully all in a single 40 minute session and if you are not up to speed with this stuff then you'll kind of be a little lost so there's a good week ahead of you okay well in which you have to submit your uh, btp reports okay but it's going to be a very short report that is inside information right <laughs> so we'll work on that okay so so please look it up i'll upload this stuff today